2021. So I want to share with you what I feel God has been saying to me about 2021. It's a strange year this year because we don't have the normal sharpening prophetic counsels, prayer times. And so much of what I've said, some of it is from Zoom calls, etc. But it is from my personal space and place because we haven't yet received all the words and updates online of what other prophets are feeling. But as I looked at this year, 2021, I was reminded that 2020, God gave me the key word and said, kickstart. He said it's a time to reassess our lives. And we have felt the shaking and we've felt this call that new means new. But I do believe that we started in 2020 a, a whole um, journey and I have felt, and I've said several times, that I feel this journey is going to be three years. I felt 2020 was the year of the kickstart, where everything stopped. It was a time to reassess. But I don't believe it's going to be quite that quick sprint, bounce back, all back to normal. I believe God is asking us to be patient. He's skilling us to wait in hope and watch with him. Words like reset, recalibrate, realign, reform are all those processing words in this season because we're still in shift and change. So this year of 2021, I believe is a transitional year. 2020 was the stop, reset, recalibrate. But now we're in that middle year of the turnaround where we have to keep adjusting to this new season. Two scriptures have come up again and again as we've just prayed personally or engaged with others on Zoom and prayed. The first one is from Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. Maybe you can think about this when you have your time of prayer and fasting. And this is what it says. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. I could um, say so much about this, but I just want to highlight a few things. Ask for the ancient paths, ask where the good way is. You see, we need to recognize that there is a way that has been designated by the ancient of days, because the second scripture comes from Daniel 7, 9. And as I looked, thrones were placed, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. And I believe we're in that transitional time. If you remember in Daniel, the Prince of Medes and Persia, there'd been all that spiritual warfare wrestling in the heavens above, an establishment of new thrones, new kingdoms, new mindset. But in the midst of it, the Ancient of Days took his throne. And I want to say that the Ancient of Days is still on the throne. What with Brexit, new um, president in America, coronavirus, new economic, so many thrones being toppled, turned, changed. The ancient of days sits. And you see, just because it, God is saying to us new means new, it doesn't mean that this way is unknown. The ancient of days knows this way, has prophesied this way. And he's saying, stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient path. Ask for that path decreed by the ancient of days. Ask for that which he has already spoken, new to you, but not to him. And we need to ask for the good way in this season. It's not about always finding new, new, new. It might be actually finding an old way, but it's new to us. So what are the distinctives that I see for 2021? I've got four. I don't know if I'll be able to do them all. But if you want the full unpacked version, if you gain, if you go to our Heart Cry for Change, I've taken four or five days um, of different messages to unpack this. But I'll give you the headlines as you come and pray and fast. So number one, 2021, coming of age. I felt God challenge me and challenge us. How are you going to respond, Rachel, to this complex and difficult year of 2020? Can you see the opportunities? Can you still be a leader out of it, stand up? Or are you still focused on all the complexities, the disappointments, all that's caused you confusion and anxiety? What choices will you make? 
In 1 Corinthians 13 verse 11, it says, when I was a child, I used to speak like a child, think like a child, reason like a child. But when I became a man, I had to do away with childish things. And I believe 2020 was an intense, difficult year. I'm sure many of you lost many things. I lost my dear dad. I lost the celebration of a 60th birthday in the way I thought. I even lost my dog, my Labrador. And, and you know, you might think it's strange to put them all together, but it's like on all levels, we lost so much. We lost the joys of what we hoped we might have. We lost the people and situations that were precious. It was horrible, it was complex. But in the midst of it, there were opportunities. And you see, I believe God is asking us, will we grow up, will we mature? Or will we be paralysed by fear? I believe God is asking us to be those people. Come on, king's people upon how who grow in adversity. Will you grow in adversity? 2021, 21, come of age. I strongly believe that the lessons of last year need to imbibe or um, influence us with grace and maturity. We cannot pretend it didn't happen. We can't just flick a page and just say, la 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 la, just return to normal. No, we need to face the facts of what did happen, but we need to delete reactions and challenges that are gonna hold us in the wrong place. This is the time to move forward. The last season needs to have matured our faith so that we can step up. We mustn't rehearse the old fears, worries, anxieties, we need to find our rhythm to turn around in this transitional year. We can't get stuck in old behaviours, old reactions. Remember, come on, King's people are uncluttered. We have to learn to repent and move forward. So 2021, I want to ask you, are you going to allow the Holy Spirit to help you come of age and mature? Number two, I felt God say, this is a year to be discerning and carry clarity or get involved in deception and confusion. Where do you want to go? There is, it's a year of discernment and clarity or deception and confusion. I don't know about you, but even now, there is so much controversy, conspiracy theories. You know, you listen to the news for one moment and you're confused and anxious. You know, the vaccine, is it good? Is it not good? Should we have it? Should we not? And I believe that we need a real upgrade of discernment so that we know we're hearing the shepherd's voice and we're not hearing our fears, anxieties, or all our personal perspectives, or even being shaped by that around us. Second Peter chapter three, 17 to 18 said, you therefore, beloved, Knowing this beforehand, knowing we're in a season of controversy and confusion, deception, be on your guard so that, come on, the king's people of Hull are not carried away by all the errors of unprincipled men who speak from their own selfishness. But you, being steadfast, grow in grace and the knowledge of your Lord Jesus. Ephesians 4 puts it like this. Verses 13 and 15. Now we all attain to the unity of the faith, to the knowledge of the Son, to be a mature man, to measure up to the stature of Christ. And as a result, we're no longer like children, tossed here and there by every wind and waves of doctrine, by the trickery of men, the craftiness, the deceptions and schemings. But we speak truth in love. You see, I believe we need to be really careful about how we use our mouth. We need to not speak our opinions and just carry on conversations that cause confusion. But we need to be that sharpened voice of God. We need to be on guard concerning so many, even seemingly spiritual reasons and opinions and not get it swept away by all these thoughts and let them put anxiety within us. I believe it is the time to speak to bring life to those who are so exhausted and overwhelmed. Remember, you are the uncluttered ones. You're gonna bring liberty. You're going to be a demonstration of the refuge in time of trouble. So there are many who are overwhelmed by the pressures and cares of this world. They've lost hope. 
but come on, you king's people upon her, find your voice and be those that carry discernment and clarity, not fueling the deception and confusion. In 2021, I believe it is a time for the prophetic voice where we speak the word of God and we need to be ready to comfort, but also confront. We need to speak and say yes and no. And so be a word of strengthening encouragement, but be ready to confront and bring protection. So number one, 2021, come of age. Number two, be those who are discerning and clear. Number three, I believe that this is a season of cluster anointings. What do I mean by that? We cannot do it alone. You know, I believe God is going to craft supernatural partnerships to help you advance into those king's people of hell that are heroes, uncluttered, carrying liberty and laughter. There are going to be alliances and partnerships formed in the spirit and formed on earth that will just upgrade you. But as we know, partnerships can either be for good or for evil. And some clusters are not good news. And so we really need to be careful about who are we partnered with? Who are we sharpening with? Because in that cluster, there can be real good wine if we get together with the right group. Isaiah 65 verse 8 says it like this. This is what the Lord says. As the juice is still found in the cluster of grapes and people say, don't destroy it. There's great blessing in it. So I will be on behalf of my servants. I will not destroy them all. In other words, be discerning about the partnerships. You know, I'm sure you know this about wines. The new wines, so often rather than being just the traditional Beaujolais or Claret, we have um, grapes of clusters. So we have the Cabernet Sauvignon, Shiraz, Merlot, and combinations of them, which actually increase and enhance the wine. And I believe that there is a cluster anointing, that no one can do what needs to be done. And so get ready for the godly clusters. And finally, number four, as I said at the very beginning, this is a transitional year. We are in the middle of a, I think, a three year journey. 2020 was stop, recalibrate, reset, kickstart. But this is the middle of the race. And often that middle year, the middle phase is the difficult to find the right pace and keep going. This is when we're gonna be tempted to sit down and just say, I'm exhausted, I'm overwhelmed, I've had enough. Oh, another lockdown, dear Jesus, help me. I'm done with this. No, we've got to keep moving. And so even as you pray and fast, ask God to give you stamina. We need stamina to endure. Because remember, King's people, you are gonna run your race with perseverance. And you see, God is going to take off the cluttering things, but you will run with perseverance. You've come too far to return to the old. It might feel like the finish line is a long way away, but come on, keep your patience and perseverance. I really sense the sense of history. I know William Wilberforce came from your area, someone who broke the slavery and set a whole new sound, not only for Britain, but for the nations. Come on, King's people from East Ridings of Yorkshire, set a new sound of social reform. And remember, you're not in this alone. You've got a race to run. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 says, don't you know that in a race, all runners run, but only one gets the prize. Come on, you King's people in heart, run in such a way to get the prize. You see, you're going to run a race of excellence. You're not going to get sloppy. You're going to be mature and do your part. And even if the end feels obscured now, don't lose your self-discipline. Be mature. Galatians 5, 7 says, you're running a great race. Come on, don't let people cut in and stop you from obeying the truth. Come on, be ruthless with every distraction. Identify those attitudes and relationships that keep cutting in and hinder your advancement rather than helping you. Come on, make sure, kings, people upon hell, you run a first-class race. 
And then in Galatians 2, 3, it says, I went in response to a revelation and met privately with esteemed leaders. I presented them with the gospel that I preach amongst the Gentiles. I wanted to be sure I was not running and had not run my race in vain. You see, I believe they're going to be divine invitations, people that you need to go and see in private, people that you know, keep connected to others in the race, that cluster anointing, keep talking to leaders that you may think don't want to hear, but there's a bigger picture, a bigger purpose, a bigger vision. This is a time to forge those relationships and although a transitional year, this is a year that you're setting yourself up for 2022. 22, the year of the keys being given to you, the keys that will open amazing doors. So come on, King's people upon her. You're coming of age. Even though it's been one of the toughest years, you're not going to let it make you like a toddler, although I have to say it, I've had my moments where I wanted to sit in my pram, throw every toy out, say, no, it's not fair. But no, we're going to grow up. We're going to be those that let adversity mature us. We're going to be discerning. I've had my moments listening to stuff, wanting to scream and thing and that. But oh God, let us hear clearly and not cause confusion, but be the voice of clarity. Oh God, I pray that you'd help us form healthy clusters, partnerships yoked together that will press in and bring a new advancement. And God, we recognise this is a transitional time. And as we know, in birthing, transition is never nice. Transitional times are painful. They're monotonous. They're boring. You just have to keep going. So, King's people, the King's town upon Hull of East Ridings in Yorkshire, as you pray, as you fast, I want you to hear what your daddy says about you. You are going to be my heroes of faith. You are going to run uncluttered with all the traditions and trappings of yesterday. You're going to carry a lightness. That's what I saw. This liberty had a lightness, a freshness, a freedom. And it carried a sound of laughter, song, singing. Psalm 136, by the rivers of Babylon. Like then the dream, we sang a new song. Let me pray for you. Father, I want to pray an extraordinary blessing upon Revive Church and everyone listening, everyone who lives in that northeast region of our nation or anywhere else. But I thank you for your hand on the King's people, King's town upon her of East Ridings of Yorkshire. You know, again and again in scripture, the east gate, the east is the gate of the glory, is the gate where the presence, the river of God comes. And so we pray, Father, that even in this week of prayer and fasting, as people turn their face to the east gate, turn their face to, the, to see you, to know you, the ancient of days, I pray that you will show them the path and they will see it and they will walk in it. So stand at the ancient path and ask God to show you the good way. And I want to say to you, even if you don't understand it, it will be good to you and you will find rest for your soul. I pray blessing upon dear Jared, Vicky, all the leaders there. Just pour your anointing upon them at this time. I thank you for all those partnerships, all that you're crafting together for this day. And we bless you. And here on a Sunday, January 2021, right at the beginning of the year, why don't you take a moment to dedicate your life to Jesus? Maybe you've never done this. But you can do it right now. Maybe you have done it, but you've just got so tired. 2021 just made you think, I'm out. But today, why don't you step in? Don't let the difficulty of last year make you step away. Today, step in. And I want you to pray for me. Just pray this wherever you are. Father, today, I want to give you my life. I'm sorry, Father, for where I've been overwhelmed. But today, I want to be 21. I want to grow up into what you've got for me. I ask you, Jesus, come into my life. 
bless me. Help me. I want to live a life knowing I'm a child of the king. I live in the king's town upon Hull, East Ridings, Yorkshire. And I am loved. Amen. Well, God really bless you. Have a great Sunday. Have a hug and be blessed. I'm Rachel Hickson from Heart Cry From Change and speaking to you from Oxford. God bless you.